Hey everyone, this is Michelle over here at Boonbape, and today I'm going to be going over everything that you need to know about part two of the forestry update. Most of what I'm going to be going over today, I've already gone over on the OSRS podcast I co-host, also called Boonbape, but I just wanted to go a bit more into detail on the update and share some info for those who do not listen to the podcast. For this video, I'll just be going over part two of the forestry update. If you are behind and want to hear all about part one, I actually did make a video on that as well back before it came out, so you could check that out. Forestry is a woodcutting expansion aimed to have us interacting with this old school skill in ways that we've never seen before. Part two of this expansion adds new events, new rewards, and foresters campfires to the game. So let's start getting into it by talking about the new events. With this update, we are getting five completely new forestry events plus one reworked event. As a reminder, events are small activities that spawn while woodcutting with your forestry kit on that reward you with extra XP, anima infused bark, and maybe even some bonus things that will go over shortly. Starting out with the friendly ent event. This is the only event of the several new ones that does not require a bonus item to spawn and that is available both to members and free to play players. When this event occurs, a few endlings will appear around your player and begin requesting new hairstyles. You can either click the endling to interact with the interface or right click them and choose whatever actions you'd like to do based on their request. For every style you get correct, you will gain woodcutting XP and some anima infused bark. At the end of the event, you get another bonus XP drop as well as a reward based on how much time you interact with the event. For members, you will also receive a random assortment of leaves and fletching XP scaled to your current level as well as a chance to get an egg nest. Next up is the Beehive event, where you'll be helping a group of bees build a new home. In order to spawn this event, either you or somebody nearby must have a smoke canister in their forestry kit. During this event, you can use any kind of log on an incomplete bee box to help build them up. The type of log does not make a difference to your rewards. For each log you add, you get a set amount of construction XP based on your contribution and current construction level, as well as woodcutting XP and anima infused bark. They did add in the notes that next week they're planning to make it so you could also obtain bee box parts from this event to put on your own POH as well, but there were some issues implementing it into this week's update. The third event is called Pheasant Control, and you will require a pheasant spoon in your inventory kit to spawn this activity. During this event, several nests will pop up on the ground, all but one of which are being protected by pheasants. You simply must find the empty nest, click it to grab the egg, and hand it back to the forester. For each egg you deliver, you'll gain woodcutting XP and anima infused bark. You will also get a chance of finding pheasant feathers, which could either be combined into the grand pheasant outfit using a needle and thread, or traded in for more anima infused bark. This event also has a rare drop of the golden pheasant egg, which works as a transmog to turn your beaver pet into a pheasant. The next event is poachers. To spawn this one, you or somebody nearby will need to have a disarming kit in their forestry kit. This event is simple enough. A group of poachers set traps to catch a fox, and all you have to do is click the trap as soon as you can to disarm it. For every trap that you help disarm, you'll get woodcutting XP and anima infused bark, with a big drop of XP and bark at the end based on your total contribution. This event also has a rare drop of a fox whistle, which can be used to transmog your beaver pet into a fox. The last of the completely new events is the enchantment ritual, which requires someone to have a petal circlet. In this event, ritual spots will appear on the ground, and you must stand on the one that does not have a matching color or shape. Repeat this process of finding the odd one out until the event is concluded. Per usual, you will receive woodcutting XP and anima infused bark for interacting with this event, along with a chance to get a wearable petal garland, which can also be traded in for more bark. The final event is actually a reworked one, being the leprechaun event. This event spawns with the use of a leprechaun charm in your forestry kit. The leprechaun event was added in part one of forestry, and the leprechaun worked as a bank to deposit logs into while you're woodcutting. This effect does still work, but now he also brings with him rainbows which spawn around the area. Running to these rainbows and standing on them will reward you with a buff for additional XP as well as a chance to get anima infused bark just by cutting trees. The more rainbows you interact with, the longer the buff lasts. If you have a leprechaun charm on you, you will also be rewarded with even more buffs. Alright, so that is it for the new events, but we also have some new rewards to go over. Before getting into the really fun stuff, first we have some more basic components added to help craft items for spawning events. You can buy 10 smoke fuel for 300 anima infused bark and 15 noted maple logs. These will require 37 herb lore, 53 smithing, and 53 woodcutting, as well as leather and a steel bar to turn into the smoke canister. You can also buy 10 egg cushions for the exact same price. However, this one will require you to have 35 mining and 25 woodcutting, along with limestone and a chisel to turn into a padded spoon. Next is 10 crystal charms, again costing the same price as the two before. To turn this into a petal circlet, you'll need to have 50 fletching and woodcutting, 3 flowers, and 1 ball of wool. 
finally is 10 Trap Disarmor Blueprints. The price for this item is 300 Anvin Fuse Bark and 15 Noted Willow Logs. It also requires 16 Hunter and 15 Woodcutting, as well as a Bronze Wire and an Iron Bar to create the Trap Disarmors. Next is by far the biggest new reward, being the Felling Axe Handle, which costs 10,000 Anima Fuse Bark and 500 Noted Oak Logs. This axe handle can be used on Bronze, Iron, Steel, Black, Mithril, Adamant, Rune, Dragon, Crystal, and Third Age Axes while next to an anvil to create a two-handed axe. Please note though that this process is irreversible, but both the Felling Axe Handle and Two-Handed Axe will be tradable on the GE. The Two-Handed Axe is more than just a new look for axes. If you have Forester's Rations in your Forestry Kit, then each successful chop with this axe will give you an additional 10% more XP in return for a 20% chance of not receiving a log. Each chop will automatically consume a ration, and if you run out, the axe will revert to working as a standard axe, so be sure to have plenty of rations in your kit. Before moving on to the rest of the rewards, I did want to make a quick note on rations, which are made by combining fish or meat with leaves. So the base level for each type of leaf is as follows. Normal will make two rations, oak, four rations, Willow, 6 rations, Maple, 8 rations, Yew, 10 rations, and Magic Leaves will make 12 rations. Depending on the tier of fish or meat you use, the number can be multiplied significantly. So if you're using a level 1 to 33 fish, you'll just have the one-time ration. But if you use level 34 to level 69 fish or cooked meat, you'll have double the rations. And level 70 to 99 fish, you will get three times the amount of rations for every leaf that you use. An example that they give is that if you were to use oak leaves and a cooked herring, you'd only create four rations. But if you were to use magic leaves and a cooked shark, you'll receive 36 rations for every single ration that you make. The next reward I'm going to go over is the sawmill voucher. This reward costs 150 anim infused bark in return for 10 vouchers. These vouchers are stackable and will allow you to get two planks for every log they use as sawmill or with the make plank spell. The vouchers are only consumed if you have space for the planks, so don't worry about accidentally using them all and dropping tons of planks on the ground. Next up is Twitcher's Gloves, which come with 250 charges and are priced at 250 anim infused bark and 25 noted willow logs. When wearing these gloves, you'll have an extra 10% chance of getting any kinds of bird's nest each time you receive a log. This includes ring, egg, seed, and clue nest. These gloves only work while woodcutting and will lose one charge for every log that you receive. Lastly, for the new rewards, we have the Cape Pouch, which costs 2,500 anima infused bark and 25 noted willow logs. If you already have 99 woodcutting, you can use this pouch on your forestry kit to store your cape inside of it and benefit from the cape's 10% increased bird's nest chance. You must be wearing the forestry kit to gain this effect. Now that we have all the rewards out of the way, let's move on to Forester's Campfires. Forestry campfires can be made by adding logs to any regular old fire. This is a great way to get rid of any logs you have without dropping them and is a new semi-AFK method for fire making. This is not without a cost though. Even though you can now deposit an entire inventory of logs at one fire, you'll be getting a third of the XP than if you burned each one on its own fire. Campfires do deplete over time, so make sure to keep adding more logs to keep them burning. In the forestry blog post, they also went over a few smaller tweaks and changes made with implementation of forestry part two. All of the new rewards that I went over have been added to the collection log. Every version of the forestry kit, log basket, and forestry backpack can now be stored in your POH. Leaves are now stackable. Mulch now has a different inventory icon, which changed depending on how much mulch you have. And the struggling sapling event now gives farming XP based on your farming level, as well as the potency of your mulch. A new feature has been added that lets you withdraw your logs directly from your log and forestry basket straight into your inventory. To do so, simply check the basket, or if you prefer, you can still empty them by using them on bank booths or clicking use while in the bank interface. That is going to be it for this video. Let me know down in the comments if you found this helpful and what you think of part two of the forestry update. If you like this video, be sure to leave it a like and subscribe to our channel. You can also catch me live on Twitch five days a week at twitch.tv slash boonbabe. And every week on the OSR's podcast, I co-host, also called Boon Babe, which can be found on this channel or wherever you get your podcast. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you all next time.